So here's a pretty interesting problem. It says that we're going to define the function f as f of x equals x squared, just our standard run-of-the-mill parabola. It says that two tangent lines to the graph of f travel through the ordered pair 1 comma negative 3. We want to try to determine the equations of each of these tangent lines. So the first thing that I did is I kind of just built a graph here. So I thought, okay, y equals x squared is going to be the blue graph that you see here. The ordered pair 1 comma negative 3 is obviously down in the fourth quadrant. And I thought, yeah, I can kind of visualize a, a tangent line that's positively sloped, touching the graph somewhere up in the first quadrant. And then I can visualize a second tangent line that's negatively sloped, intersecting that graph somewhere in the second quadrant. Now, one strategy that you w wouldn't necessarily want to rule out, but it wouldn't be my go-to strategy in really any situation, is guess and check. You know that this point here is in the first quadrant, so you know a little bit about its x-coordinate. Is it 2? Is it 3? Is it 4? Is it 5? So you can guess and check and try to kind of work backwards to see if you build those tangent lines to this function at each of those spots. Do the tangent lines actually go through this ordered pair? Similarly, is this at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4? And you can try to figure out if any of those tangent lines go through this location. But you realize with guess and check, you have to you have to guess well. You have to get a little bit lucky. That, that process isn't always all that efficient. So here's the strategy that is a little bit more direct. I know that the derivative of this function, just with a standard power rule, is going to be 2x. The equation of my tangent line, I know I can build it with this ordered pair being utilized. Normally, you know the point of tangency. This problem is a little bit different because we don't. We know a point on the tangent line, but it is not the same point that's normally known. Normally, the point that we know is the point that's actually the intersection point between the tangent line and the curve, the point of tangency. In this case, we're needing to try to seek that out a little bit. But what I did is I built a point slope line right here. Y minus the Y coordinate from the point that I knew was on the line equals M times the quantity X minus the x coordinate that corresponds to this y. Now, how are you going to determine this slope right here if this is really a tangent line? Well, you would determine this slope with the derivative's value. So if I replace m with 2x, here's what the equation of my, I'm going to call this the equation of my tangent line. It's technically not the, even the equation of a line. We'll talk about why soon. Uh, but the equation of my tangent line transforms to this. The reason why this line here is a little bit more useful to us than this initial line is, this initial line depends on three things we don't know, the y, the x, and the unknown slope. This only depends on two unknowns, the y and just x on the other side of the equation, no longer an m. Now, if I wanted to try to manipulate this equation a little bit, there's two steps of algebra that are pretty obvious that I can do. I can distribute this 2x into the parentheses, which would give me 2x squared minus 2x. And then if I subtracted this 3 from the right side of the equation, I have an equation that says y equals, and that's technically the equation of a parabola. Now, here's the whole linchpin of this strategy. This has to be true in order for this point to be on our tangent line, in order for the point 3 comma negative 1 to be on our tangent line. But this has to be true in order for our line to actually be a tangent line. If the equation of the parabola is not true, I'm not going to intersect the parabola with my line. So simultaneously, if we want the ordered pair 1 comma negative 3 on our tangent line, this equation has to be true. If we want the point to actually be intersecting our, the line to actually be intersecting our curve at some point, this equation has to be true. So what this turns into is it actually turns into a system of quadratic equations, and I'm going to solve it by substitution. This bottom equation is telling me y equals x squared. Well, I can substitute that x squared in place of this y. And if I want to continue to go about trying to solve that, I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. You solve quadratic equations by getting something set equal to zero. Uh, and then this is a non-calculator question. So I went with my 
hope that this was going to be able to be solved by factoring, and it was. So I factored the right side of the equation. This factor is equal to zero when x is three. This factor is equal to zero when x is negative one. So what I've just identified is I've just identified the x-coordinate of this point in the first quadrant is positive three, and the x-coordinate of this point in the second quadrant is negative one. What are the equations of my tangent lines? Well, I just need to figure out what the slope of the red line and of the purple line from my initial diagram actually are. So the red line, if I'm trying to find the slope of the line using the x-coordinate of 3, I'm just going to plug 3 in place of the x in my derivative. 2 times 3 gives me a slope of 6. So here I just rewrote this equation with the appropriate slope in place. Uh, you can also now use the point of tangency if you're doing a point slope build for the equation of your tangent line. Uh, so I know that this ordered pair has an x of 3. The corresponding y I would get by putting 3 in place of the x in the function. Uh, so that would turn out to be 9. And then once through a similar approach with the purple line. So I knew the purple line had a point of tangency on this graph in quadrant 2. I've determined the x-coordinate for that point is negative 1. Therefore, the slope is going to be 2 times negative 1, or negative 2. So here's the same initial tangent line that we wrote out with the appropriate slope in place. Similarly, if you would rather build the tangent line's equation with the actual point of tangency, which is probably what you do more regularly, the x-coordinate of this point is negative 1. The corresponding y is negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. So I put negative 1 in for x, positive 1 in for y. Last thing that we'll show within this video is not on that screen, it is on this screen. So I, I went and hit up Desmos here, and what we have is we have in red the parabola, and you see this blue line and this green line, they do intersect at 1, negative 3. Now check out the blue line. The blue line, if I come up to where it hits the graph, the blue line hits the graph at, there it was, can I get it? Why is it not snapping to the point? There we go, 3, 9, right? So we have that tangent line uh, in place from our conclusion. And then this should be at the ordered pair, negative 1, 1. So yeah, we do have the intersection point between the parabola and the line at negative 1, 1.